good evening uh, everyone uh, it is indeed a very proud day for rc vadagara that we are hosting today a very important uh, program uh, as per our schedule uh, for um, in fact taking forward the special campaign 2.0 uh, of the government of india for the disposal of uh, uh, pending matters and uh, like uh, many other organizations in the country you know is also steadfastly moving forward in taking this mission very seriously to its logical conclusion today we have a host of very eminent dignitaries with, uh, with us to discuss this very important issue and uh, without wasting any further time we will set in motion the uh, activities of day uh, by uh, starting the kulgeet of the university The, uh, the duty that is assigned to be uh, now is to welcome the dignitaries for this program uh, we are indeed very very fortunate that uh, for this program uh, we have none other uh, than uh, our esteemed pro vice chancellor sir the honorable pro vice chancellor sir of the university sri srikant mahapatra dr srikant mahapatra sir to uh, deliver the presidential address sir uh, needs no introduction Uh, sir has been at the forefront of all the activities related to this university and has been um, a, a major force in taking forward you know uh, to the level and heights that it is at present seen acro um, all across the world uh, it is my uh, honor uh, to in fact welcome sir to this uh, program sir's uh, contribution cooperation and uh, support has been there for all activities of all the regional centers inclu including that of rc vadagara so it is my uh, profound privilege to welcome you to this program sir um, may i now also welcome uh, the esteemed keynote speaker uh, for this day uh, sri pk abdul karim uh, sir he is also a very proficient speaker he has also held numerous um positions in various institutions uh, associated with the government of india uh, sir has 
also it uh, also has another side to his character where he in fact helps a lot of underprivileged people um, across the country uh, and it is our proud privilege that we have such an eminent personality uh, to uh, deliver the keynote address for this day so welcome you uh, i uh, it is my privilege to welcome you to this program sir um, we also have dr hema pant who no, uh, needs no introduction to anyone in igno um, in fact madam has been in the forefront of all activities related to uh, the regional services division uh, over the years she has carved out a niche niche for herself in every activity here she has undertaken in this university so uh, it is my privilege once again madam to welcome you to this uh, august gathering um, uh, we also have with us uh, our um, uh, assistant regional director madam dr pramila o and also my uh, colleague at the regional center uh, dr pravin kumara assistant uh, registrar who are, who have been with me for all the activities related to rc vadagara their contribution to the regional center is immense uh it is my proud privilege to welcome both of them to this program uh without wasting any further time may i now request uh, our assistant regional director madam dr pramila o to introduce, uh, introduce the esteemed guests for the day madam could you unmute yourself ma'am thank you sir respected honorable pvc of igno Dr. Srikant Mohabatra, our chief guest, Sri P. K. Abdul Karim, Economic Advisor, Ministry of Rural Development, Senior Regional Director of RC Vadagara, Dr. M. Jajesh, our Additional Director of RST, Dr. Hema Pant, Sri Praveen Kumar, AR, RC Vadagara, and all other participants. Good evening to one and all. Today, we are conducting this webinar regarding the special campaign, including disposal of pending matters, proper record management, and awareness generation in three, on three hours, that is reduce, reuse, and recycle. I am extremely happy to convey that we are blessed with the presence of Mr. Abdul Kari, the economic advisor who is going to present the keynote address we have also with us the Honorable uh, PVC of IGNO, Dr. Mahabhadra, and additional director of IGNO, RSD, Dr. Hema Pant. To introduce Sri P.K. Abdul Karim. Sri P.K. Abdul Karim is an officer of India Economic Service and is presently serving as economic advisor in the Department of Land Resources Ministry of Rural Development, New Delhi. He has taken his master's in development economics from Calicut University and MPhil in environment economics from Madras University. He has worked in different ministries, Department of Government of India, which includes Ministry of Finance, Department of Economics Affairs, Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, Planning Commission, Economic Advisory Council, Ministry of Information and Broadcasting, etc. He has represented our country in various official meetings also. I extend a warm welcome to you, sir, to this webinar. We have also with us the Honorable PVC of Igno, Dr. Mahabhadra. And Dr. Mahabhadra has served as officer on special duty of Odisha State University OSOU. He has appointed as first vice chancellor of OSOU and subsequently worked as VC OSOU for second term. Dr. Smohapatra has served as the director, regional service division, and EMPC IGNO. He has also served as the controller of examination at Sikkim University. Dr. Smohapatra did his SAMPHIL and PhD from JNU. New Delhi in international politics with specialization in South Asian studies. He has taught political science and international politics for 10 years in both undergraduate and postgraduate classes in various UGC sponsored autonomous colleges in the state of Odisha. 
Dr. Asma Habatra has got wide experience in the field of student support and evaluation under distance education system. He has worked for five years, each as regional director of ICNO for Bihar and Odisha. In the year 2004, he was awarded IGNO Gold Medal for providing the best services to the students by the former president of India, Dr. APJ Abdul Kala. In the field of evaluation of students' performance through continuous evaluation and semester examination, he has handled one of the largest examination systems under higher education stream anywhere in the world. Dr. Mohapatra has widely traveled in India and abroad to participate in seminars and workshops. He has visited the United Kingdom, United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Ethiopia, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, Nepal, and Malaysia. I would like to extend a warm welcome to you, sir. And uh, also, I extend a warm welcome to uh, Dr. Hema Pant, the additional director of IGNO, and all other participants to our function. Thank you all. And uh, over to the regional director of RC Vadagra, Dr. Tam Rajesh. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that very comprehensive introduction of our esteemed guests. Uh, without wasting any further time, may I now request uh, uh, Dr. Srikant Mahapatra, sir, our esteemed pro vice chancellor, to deliver the presidential address for this very important program. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Uh, let me at the outset congratulate and compliment the regional center Badakara in the state of Kerala for taking this initiative of launching the special campaign 2.0, which is a flagship program of the government of India on 3R. And the three R's are reduce, reuse, and recycle. <clears throat> In the context of the office environment. Now this is an initiative under the Swachha Bharat Abhijan, Swachha Bharat Mission of Government of India which was initiated under the active leadership of the Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi. <clears throat> Every one of us in India were very, very enthused and excited about Swachhata, cleanliness, not only in our society, in our country, but within ourselves also. That is very important because unless you yourself is such a clean, you can't think of an, a clean environment around you. And you can't visualize a clean environment for the whole country and also a clean and safe environment for the entire humanity hopping across the boundaries or territories. Therefore, this initiative is very, very unique. And I'm very happy that Government of India has launched this special campaign 2.0 during the celebration of Gandhi Janti that it will it has started from 2nd of october launched on 1st of october initiated process initiated from 2nd of october and it will continue till 31st of october and the ministry of administrative reform and public grievances has been given the responsibility as the nodal agency among all the ministries 
to coordinate the entire activity our own ministry that is ministry of education has also given guidelines to all the central university in this regard that please ensure that the 3r is being implemented in all central universities in their extended institutions and igno is unique because igno has headquartered at the at new delhi it has 57 regional centers and more than 2100 learner support centers across the country and even abroad so therefore implementation of this scheme through igno carries special significance and in that context when our regional centers are coming forward and particularly rc badakara taking the initiative in this regard they deserve all appreciation and credit from the headquarters now the main scheme for which the government of india has taken the initiative is swachhata cleanliness in the office environment and you have to ensure that all the pending issues are resolved within this stipulated period of one month and what are the pending issues the most important pending issues for me in the context of indira gandhi national open university is student grievances problems of the students and if there are any grievances if if we address those grievances and resolve those grievances within this stipulated time then i think that we are doing our duty we thought most honesty and sincerity the guidelines of the ministry also says that you reduce the grievances or the repentation which have which you have received from the honorable member of the parliament because they are representing their constituency so if they have represented or forwarded any grievances of any individual from within their constituency then it is our duty as a public official as a public servant to ensure that these grievances are seriously handled and dealt with similarly inter ministerial grievances if there has come from any ministry that needs to be handled during this period on priority there is a prime minister portal there is a cabinet secretary portal there is a ugc portal there is a ministry of education portal and there is a grievance redressal portal of igno and we must ensure that all these grievances are handled carefully sensitively with a positive frame of mind and are resolved on priority now igno being a national university with a national jurisdiction with 57 regional center and having only as in today 11 own premises rest of the premises are hired so space management is a major issue in igno including at regional center badakara so how do you efficiently manage this space that is also very important being a university which is almost reaching 40 years of its existence how do you handle the records old records the obsolete items the scrap that also will require attention at the headquarter and at the regional center so there are many issues in fact we have initiated the process of removing the scrap 
and adopted a policy of zero garbage in our regional center and headquarter a year back but still there are many things which are to be handled which are to be dealt with so in this context of special campaign on swachhata 2.0 rc bhartakara has taken the initiative of organizing this webinar on record management and implementation of pr in office and i am extremely extremely happy that we have with us sri pk abdul karim economic advisor i am not sure sir about Uh, the department whether it is department of land resources or department of rural development if it is department of rural development i am extremely happy because my junior colleague uh, and friend was the additional secretary in the department uh, when i last talked to him uh, prabhat sarangi he was uh, from my village he was from jnu and we were very very close to each other and uh, but i am still extremely happy that an economic advisor of government of india uh, dr abdul karim is with us to tell us about record management which is extremely extremely important how do you manage your own records because that is where ignu has really uh, not done much that is my personal opinion that we don't know how to maintain our own records and there is a there is no standard operating procedure issued from the headquarters to our regional centers or study centers how will they maintain their records so therefore people maintain the records as per their free will some destroy the record from the very first day and some maintain the records for last uh, 30 years because no guidelines have been issued to them from the headquarters uh, dr hema pant is here so she will take note of it and whatever comes out from this webinar madam please give me yes let point for so that we will prepare a standard operating procedure for maintenance of records at the regional centers and yes. i personally feel that this record handling record keeping record maintenance and digitization of records for the future is extremely extremely important so i once again uh, thank uh, the rc badakara the regional director dr rajesh his team dr uh, pramita Am I pronouncing your name correctly? C A D. Pramila. Pramila O. Oh, Pramila sir. Pramila. Oh Pramila. Pramila. Ah yeah yeah. Ah Pramila. Ah, you have not talked to me in the last ten years, so I have forgotten your name. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Praveen, A R Assistant Register at R C Bhattakara. so i have visited your center 10 years back yes yes sir I, i must compliment all three of you let me tell you that your center has done extremely well uh, for admission for the july 2020 2022 session when i compare your admission figures with that of kochin and trivandrum tiruvananthapura and with many other rcs in southern part of india i feel that you are number one in the southern part of india so all my congratulations to all of you well done keep it up and do well and finally i welcome uh, pk abdul karim ji the economic advisor of government of india to this seminar and i expect that all the participants will be really uh, uh, enlightened with your talk thank you very much sir thank you
thank you sir uh, thank you for giving us a very comprehensive uh, view of uh, what uh, this campaign should really be about and the broad contours of what is involved in um, uh, making uh, records very uh, comprehensive as far as the university is concerned and uh, i also uh, personally and on behalf of my um, colleagues at the regional center thank you for the uh, wonder wonderful words of encouragement and appreciation that you have bestowed upon us for uh, the work we have been doing sir so these words of encouragement mean a lot of a lot to us and we shall strive definitely in future to achieve greater heights thank you so much for your uh, wonderful presidential address sir thank you sir uh, now it is my uh, duty to uh, welcome our keynote speaker for the day uh, dr pk abdul karim economic advisor department of land revenue ministry of rural development uh, to deliver his address so we are all eagerly waiting uh, to hear from you on this very very important topic that we are deliberating upon today or to you sir and in the meantime i shall also mount your presentations okay thank you everyone uh, thank you dr rajesh and good evening to everyone uh, dr srikant mohopatra respected uh, pro vice chancellor igno Dr. Hema Pant, Additional Director, Regional Services Division, IGNO. Dr. Rajesh, Dr. Pramila, Dr. Praveen, and all other dignity uh, functionaries who have joined this important meeting from different locations, different states. Uh, at the very outset, I would uh, inform that I am uh, working as Economic Advisor in Department of Land Resources. Uh, under the Minister of Rural Development. So, so I'm just, uh, uh, Dr. Mohabatra has, uh, has asked. Now, so I'm, now I understand the confusion. Thank yeah, you yeah, yeah. for there are, there, there are two departments, uh, the Department of Rural Development and the Department of Land Resources. Okay. So okay. the Department of Land Resources specializes with the land uh, uh, governance activities. Basically, okay. on the digitalization of land records, watershed management, uh, uh, and uh, indicating more, more and more reforms in the digitalization of land records, uh, partnering with the states. Thank you. So now I will just formally go to the, the, the lecture. So before that, uh, I am extremely thankful to IGNO. Uh, especially Dr. Rajesh and his team for providing me an op opportunity to speak on this important topic. I am really privileged to be part of this important symposium uh, on cleanliness drive and record management. Uh, I would also like to tell you that I am also the nodal officer for special campaign for the Department of Land Resources. So in the government of India, there are about 80 ministries and departments uh, which, are, which is implementing this uh, special campaign 2.0 right from October 2nd to 31st. I mean, now it is nearing 31st October. So we are running our campaign you know, uh, on day to day. Our secretary is taking meetings, uh, how to improve the, the, the cleanliness drive, how to improve, how to bring reforms, you know, in our thoughts, in our uh, way of life, you know, so as to improve the overall working environment. And I'm a student of economics uh, and I'm an economist by training. So this topic is dear to me. It, and I hope this session will be of some value uh, to all of you. So, first of all, I will be uh, discussing the important aspects of Sochita campaign uh, or the special uh, special campaign and as well as the record management. I have made a presentation and I will be presenting my screen with you. And uh, the outline consists of four parts. The, the concept of Sochita and its dimensions the record management in offices, then the special features of the special campaign and the best practices uh, adopted during this campaign. So, so this is the broad framework in which I would like to speak. Uh, can you go up, you know? Uh, 
yes uh, before going to the record management guidelines i would uh, like to start with the the swachhda campaign as you are aware honorable prime minister sri narendra modi ji launched the nation wide cleanliness campaign on 2nd of october 2014 on the occasion of mahatma gandhi's birth anniversary this concept of swachh bharat abhiyan is to provide sanitation facilities to every family including providing toilets solid and uh, liquid waste disposal systems village cleaners and safe and adequate drinking water supply the abhiyan has been under implementation for the last 8 years and it has made impactful changes in the country over this period this leads to me this leads us to the thought of gandhi uh, on cleanliness it is necessary to understand mahatma gandhi's view on cleanliness according to gandhi ji cleanliness is most important for physical well being and a healthy environment it has a bearing on public and personal hygiene it is therefore essential for everyone to learn about cleanliness hygiene and sanitation we and about various diseases that are caused by poor hygienic conditions as quoted by gandhi ji no one should spit or clean his nose on the streets in some case in some cases the sputum is so harmful that germs infect others those who spit in public after chewing bitter leaves and tobacco have no consideration for feeling of others he wrote this in navjeevan on 2nd november 1919 pointing to unhygienic habits gandhi ji emphasized observing cleanliness in laboratories he wrote i shall have to defend myself on one point namely sanitary conveniences I learned 35 years ago that a laboratory must be as clean as a drawing room. Now, even 1925, Gandhi's lectures focused on concept of preventing diseases, so that there is no need to rely on taking medicines. Medical evidence shows that lack of pure water supply in villages is responsible for many of the diseases. suffered by the villagers hydrogen he has written in hydrogen in the year 1938 as you know we have suffered the covid pandemic in the last 3 3, 3 to 4 years 3 years so during the covid pandemic people could understand the need for maintaining cleanliness in personal and public life we followed the, the concepts of hand washing use of masks and social distance this helped us to save a lot of lives in the country during the pandemic in the government offices maintenance of cleanliness and collective responsibility helped to provide a enabling working environment in the offices and to set in good standards of life so the point is the cleanliness is not only totally the responsibility of safai karmachariis or local self governments it is the responsibility of all citizens it is the responsibility of government officers non governmental organizations and the local community to make this country clean and healthy so now i move to the topic of the record management in government offices next for as you know for robust record management the record should not be prematurely destroyed or not kept for long period so it should have a balanced life this will help us the help us to achieve economy and efficiency so there's a need for a record retention schedule which is to be drawn up by the departments and ministries based on standard guidelines as you know uh, there are two departments which are uh, providing this guidelines on on 
on record retentions one is the department of uh, department of uh, administrative reforms and public grievances and the other is the the, the national archives of india there are two type of record retention schedules one is a retention schedule for facilitative functions what to to support the ministries facilitate second the retention schedule for substantive functions so let us come to the retention schedule for facilitating functions this uh, this function is common for all the departments and ministries this uh, these records relates to establishment personal office equipments parliament matters common office procedures as mentioned in the central secretariat manual of office procedures so this uh, record retention for these matters are drawn up by the department of administrative reforms and public grievances as far as the matters concerning financial matters like budget finance cash and accounts are concerned guidelines on general financial rules are issued by the minister of finance i will just be, explain your brief background see for instance uh, in my previous uh, uh, posting i was working with the uh, uh, minister of uh, minister of information and broadcasting so the ministry of information and broadcasting used to uh, do a lot of i mean get uh, uh, payments for the advertisements to the private uh, advertisers no they used to get a lot of uh, uh, Ad advertisements will be done uh, through the private uh, agencies so uh, this private agencies has to be provide the bill bill to them i mean uh, over the period of time you know in order to make pay but the the volume of uh, payments are such that you know these uh, these two bills you know these bills have been accumulated in three four uh, big big rooms over the last 10 years and then they used to keep this bills in in this room so that you know it should not be lost so this is the way we have been managing with the with the with the physical format of all the bills so under the special campaign efforts are being done to digitalize these records and to to use these type of rooms you know in order to 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 put into further activity it can be used for a for a conference room it can be used for uh, uh, of, uh, official functions you know so these three rooms you know which was been flooded with the bills you know physical copy of bills have been now used for uh, this type of uh, activities so uh, with, the, with the digitalization with the uh, the improvement of record keeping uh, we can we can, we can we can reuse the, these these uh, these rooms so so this the, so uh, the, under the special campaign uh, the officials the the senior officers the the third, the junior officers are all sitting together to see how how this um, swachhada this uh, record management can be kept uh, can be improvised of course it is as per the guidelines of the department of administrative reforms but it is it is made simple uh, adhering to the standards then i come i i am coming to the record pertaining to substantive functions in this uh, in this the retention schedule for records are prepared by a record creating agency of the department say for instance in my department there should be a, a there should be a division or a, a section which will uh, create the records pertaining to the functions which are per peculiar to that particular department so uh, as per the public record act 1993 read with the provisions every record a uh, record creating agency would compile retention schedule for records which is to be vetted by the national archives of india before implementation so there are some steps to be followed on the re uh, retention schedule so my simple point is that you know uh, 
this uh, the, the, uh, there are standard guidelines uh, how to how to how to keep the substantive substantive records so these are the details are available in the central secretariat manual of guidelines 2022 so this can be referred to before uh, before going to this uh, this thing i would like to know i have to inform that you know these records are classified into three categories i mean whatever records we pile up in the government offices no over the years they are classified into three categories a b and c in the a category these records are for a permanent per preservation and are to be microfilmed as per the as per the as per the uh, the terminology they have to be microfilmed this this document is so precious that the original must be preserved preserved intact and access to it in original form must be uh, must be restricted to the barest minimum the the simple point is that this is a very valuable document and this document must be preserved for a permanent nature the record it should be reviewed on every five years and after five years or after completion of 25 years no uh, this can be transferred to or before that uh, based on the retention schedule in consultation with the national archives of india it can be transferred to uh, national archives of india depending on the review And I talked about the A category records. What are the, the records in A category? The records of A category include the records of value for administrative purpose. This includes evidence of rights and obligations of and against the government. For instance, the title of the property, claims for compensation, formal instruments like awards, orders, sanctions, etc. It also relates to major policy decisions taken by the government, including the legislative plan. It also includes the constitution and functions of various committees. It also includes administrative memorandums, historical reports, legal opinion. It also includes salient features of organization and staffing patterns of departments. It also includes important litigation cases as well. So these, uh, these records are generally classified as A category records. And in addition, there are some historical records like the origin of the a department uh, or agency of the government, whether it functioned well, if defunct, whether how it has been dissolved, then the papers on uh, change in policies, then the papers on prominent places and international events that have taken in the past, then papers on scientific and technical research, papers on obsolete activities or investigation, or any other category as specified by the National Art Case of India. So these, uh, these records have to be maintained properly and of a permanent nature. And in B category, the records pertain to administrative and historical importance, as mentioned earlier. But these files are to be preserved for 25 years or more based on review. But these files or records need not be microfilmed. So I would like to uh, discuss the point on microfilming because in the earlier system there was a uh, system in which you know uh, this uh, paper records become defunct and they they will also get destroyed over the period of time. So they used to microfilm through a small camera and uh, through a filming. It it can be called as a filming and it will be put on the reels. It will be stored in the reels. So now technology has changed. So now things will undergo further changes. But in the past, the microfilming was the technique adopted in order to preserve the 
documents. So I am coming to category C records. This category C records are related to subjects of secondary importance. This referral value will be for a limited period of 10 years. It can be a period uh, ranging for one year, especially if it's some leave applications to something uh, ranging to 10 years. So all the administrative matters like personal, administrative, office equipment, you know, comes under this category. And I would like to say that, you know, all these are, uh, uh, all this can be uh, referred under the Central Secretariat Manual of Office Procedure or you can go to the uh, the website of national archives of india so all these uh, details are available in the website so now i am just coming to the third part of the the the, the presentation uh, that is the special campaign as indicated by the honorable uh, pro vice chancellor uh, the objectives of the campaign is uh, to minimize pendencies. No, the pendencies. No, we have been getting a lot of references from the, uh, the honourable members of parliament, then different the state governments, uh, interdepartmental papers, interministerial papers. So many times, you know, uh, the papers need to be fast tracked. So the campaign thought that you no, know, through the campaign it would be need to focus each and every paper and to to address these uh, these uh, papers in a very with great attention. And second objective is to institutionalize Swachhada. Swachhada does not mean that it should be done for a week, it should be for a day, it should be for a month. It should be considered to be done on a regular basis. It's a it's a continuous program. So how to take Swachhada? Uh, because generally their feeling is that Swachhada is just a cleaning. It is not that. It's a cleaning the office environment and involving, involving all the officers, all the, all the staff in the system, then we could uh, we could provide a better working environment in the office spaces. So we could design. It does not mean that somebody should give some idea that this should be done. So within the local office level, they can understand the, the requirements. They can ask for budget. They can ask for funds and get the things implemented. And another aspect is the record management. So in a way, as you mentioned, you know, the, when the records are not properly kept, you know, this is the way in order to train the officers to for proper record management and uh, thereby a uh, most focus will be to how to for how to follow a retention schedule and then based on the standards, all the files can be reviewed and based on the review, these files can be weeded out. This weeding out process can also take place after this campaign also. The campaign gives a focus to focused attention to the to these activities. As you know, the technology has been has been a major game changer, and all the physical records, you know, which are available in the office system, is now going way for uh, e-files. So in the government of India, the departments have been uh, following the e-filing system. So, so the, the, the approach is that, you know, while we reduce, I mean, while we go for reduction of physical records, we, we will uh, try to ensure the 100% e-filing of the records. And we, the, 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 another objective is to have a monitoring mechanism for such the, on a, on a, medium term to long term basis so as i said there is a tendency to be brought to zero uh, the, there are a lot of public grievances coming for the different ministries the department of uh, administrative reforms and public grievances have been the nodal agency so uh, so as far as this campaign is concerned you know i have a, a press note which has been issued by the ministry of um, the department of administrative reforms so they say that, you know, as part of the record management, 45 lakh files has been reviewed. 45 lakh files have been reviewed in the government of India offices across the last 28 days. So of which, you know, uh, certain files may have to be retained. They may not be uh, destroyed. 
so uh, so 45 files has been examined by the officials there has been an redressal of public grievances of 3 lakh 75 thousand uh, public grievances during this three, th uh, three weeks and as you know the whenever when we clean up the system there will be a lot of uh, uh, electronic waste you know because you know rather now we talked about physical reports but in the process of uh, going taking forward you also buy a lot of computers and uh, office equipments so over the period of time maybe it's a matter of three to five years these uh, instruments becomes obsolete and this needs to be weeded out but unfortunately the uh, the we we were not i mean the officers uh, did not uh, i mean take that much interest to weed out because you know uh, many times uh, these procedures were uh, rather uh, difficult or uh, it was not so simple so they thought you know uh, let us keep it uh, so so uh, so now the focus is shifting to 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 to, to do away with the uh, electronic waste so that you know office spaces can be kept clean so uh, i am the 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 the, the, the as per the press note, 272 crore rupees has been received uh, by by selling this type of thing, you know, uh, this space freed and the, uh, the waste disposal, the, the, the overall, the total department's total tally comes to 272 crores have been received as, as a revenue from this exercise. And uh, several MP references has been addressed, and uh, in easing of rules and process in different uh, departments in order to uh, improve the citizen centric services. They have simplified the rules and regulations, and uh, around 664 uh, rules and process have been simplified. So, so this is uh, this is a nutshell, and you know the social media. It has been highlighted in the social media, and uh, it has been widely reported in print, visual, uh, visual media, uh, and uh, even if you go to the Twitter and, and social media too, it has it has already covered 19.7 crore impressions by the end of week three. So, so, so 65 ministries department have issued PIB statements since inception of this special campaign 2.0. So this is a welcome change, you know, so that, you know, the, the, not only the physical uh, files are cleaned up, but also, uh, but also the, the electronic waste, uh, and see, I'm just, uh, just go up, just go up. So I am just giving a brief. These are just come down. This just see. These are all some of our old items, you know, which was remaining in our offices, like old chairs. Then this type of typewriters, uh, this type of uh, um, computers, uh, the monitors as well as CPU. All were rallying the. And then you know a lot of chairs and lot telephones etc. So they were heaping and they were just dumping into different rooms. Now the point is that these rooms are being cleaned up, these wastes are put out, and they are recycled and uh, reused. So in my office, you know, the uh, before the campaign, uh, the the there were the the uh, the office systems were looking. I mean, we're not that good. So with the campaign, just go up. Uh, the office working environment, just go up. After the campaign, the, uh, the generally the, the we will have a general a clean uh, working workspaces. Uh, just go up. So so in addition to the cleaning, actually the people can have innovative ideas, just planting trees, uh, watering them, so that you know we are telling a message to the world that uh, we are for the plants and farms, plants are for us. So that means we are caring the environment. And uh, as in, in the Department of Land Resources, we have uh, in, we have created a facility called Health Wellness Center. 
so in the in the because of the shortage of space the, the in the many of the departments they may not have health wellness centers so we have created health wellness centers where you know the employees in order to de de stress or they want to have if they want to meditate or if they want to do certain um, uh, yoga they can go and do the exercise for a, a period so this is also a new initiative taken taken by the department in order to in order to uh, take it forward the mission see i am just taking a, another another uh, best practices see during the campaign a rail coach uh, restaurant has been started in gundu actually see this um, this, uh, this this was a sleeper coach which was not of that use so they remodeled it uh, into a high class uh, restaurant and uh, it was made available in the circle circulating space of that gundu railway station so this was uh, opened in october october 10th so similarly a dump yard converted into a recreation center because i told you many a time you know uh, many uh, articles all things will be dumped so they have uh, this dump yard converted into a recreation center in the department of telecommunications so it will be a regional center so uh, innovative methods can be done in order to in order to then we can this is a this is relating to department of post see whenever in the this kolkata gpo parcel cafe gpo there is people used to stand outside in order to send parcels so they don't have that weight so now there was a uh, there was a space available uh, which was for the uh, staff canteen so during the this can uh, this special campaign they converted this uh, this uh, staff canteen into a full fledged uh, cafe in which you know they provided the modern facilities and the the the, the people who come for uh, people who come for uh, sending parcels they can sit there they can have coffee and they also display a lot of philatelic 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 uh, philatelic facilities such as mugs uh, which are which they can use no in the form so the stamping of postal department will be there so it can be used as a, a, a souvenir you know uh, it can be converted so the, the post the postal department is extending all the support uh, i am also told that you know there used to be a wax uh, used you know wax used in the post offices in order to in order to uh, to seal the uh, bags or books you know? so that has also been changed they are going because this type of wax create lot of pollution it also help affects the health of the employees so now they are going to they are switching over to a environment friendly sealing systems so these are all innovative steps you know which has improved the situation so uh, this is a facility provided by the uh, this is some uh, center so they are uh, provided by the ministry of chemicals and fertilizer pradhan mantri kisan samriddhi kendra so they they are providing some more additional facilities in this uh, uh, so and now i am coming to this a uh, garden garden uh, which has been uh, developed by the uh, this coal india uh, limited at bokaro so this was like a dump yard so this has been uh, reconverted using the scrap items like tires pipes etc and converting into different you know this type of a garden so they call it as garbage to garden so so with the availability of funds with the availability of uh, uh, i mean uh, systems available they are converting into this into a new mode of campaign so these are the pictures uh, which relates to this campaign activity so uh, i am nearing the completion of this presentation by the ultimate the message is that you know we can now think about you know through the campaign we can think about you know uh, innovative measures by which you know your office spaces can be clean how this uh, electronic waste or physical records can be properly managed and ultimately it provides a good working environment to the employees as well as the citizens at large 
so this is the the points no which i would uh, like to share with you and uh, i uh, with this thing i would like to close this session if you have any questions you can uh, you can ask me on this part thank, thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you for that very very interesting and comprehensive presentation on uh, the mission and uh, the best part was that you included so many of those uh, best practices which are adopted by various ministries institutions so on and so forth uh, this gives us a real birds eye view of what actually we can do in igno uh, as well with regard to uh, this special campaign it was a wonderful mm -hmm. presentation sir and i am sure that uh, not only our coordinators and um, other staff members from the regional center who are watching this program uh, would be benefited but definitely the wider public who have joined us today uh, on this uh, broadcast they will also be greatly benefited um, from this presentation and uh, not least is the fact that this is a kind of presentation that uh, that could be kept on record and lot of uh, positives could be drawn out of such a presentation for future times as well and this can act as a guideline of sorts so that uh, later on uh, when we act upon various activities uh, related to the swachhata campaign we will definitely be benefited in taking uh, hindsight out of your experience as you have presented in this uh, particular uh, presentation of yours sir wonderful presentation no doubt about that um, and it has been as always a pleasure to listen to you sir um, uh, uh, and uh, it is now uh, my proud privilege uh, to welcome uh, once again hema pand madam uh, madam is the additional director uh, in uh, the regional services division of igno and uh, madam uh, has been uh, has been the fulcrum on which uh, many of the activities of the rs3 have been taking place uh, in the past many years uh, so uh, for igno its madam of course does not need any introduction but uh, for the general uh, viewers who are uh, who have joined us in large numbers today for them uh, this kind of a short introduction would help madam over to you and uh, for your special interest we will all be all ears um, and we will definitely uh, take down points from your presentation as well to take forward the campaign at our regional centers over to you ma'am thank you dr rajesh for that uh, those very kind words I, i really don't know whether i'm worthy of all that but yes it's been a very um, kind of engaging uh, presentation um, both from our honorable pro vice chancellor dr mahapatra and our esteemed uh, chief resource person uh, and eminent uh, expert uh, shri kareem um uh, i think um i really have uh, nothing much to say today but just uh, before i uh, say the you know the uh, obligatory words i just have a question in my mind and i if uh, if it is okay may i just ask um, uh, shri kareem ji there was like the categorization of records a b and c um like the category c is um subjects of secondary importance like uh, and the retention is from 1 year to 10 years uh, as you stated so um i like for example you said leave records etc so um uh, but for certain uh, for certain operations like for example uh, rti act 2005 and all the retention uh, is 20 years i mean uh, records i'm just giving an example like so um how does one kind of uh, decide whether you know these records can be like you said they needn't be microfilmed and they needn't be uh, you know retained beyond that uh, period mm -hmm. so maybe yeah. of course for uh, finer details we could always uh, you know see refer to the uh, guidelines which are provided but if you could just throw some light on this like the slight um, confusion here uh yeah thank you ma'am uh, i understand your question see for category c it's not secondary importance because you know it is a facilitating function of the the departments you know like maybe through the budget uh, or through through this uh, office equipment you know uh, so there are some standard guidelines issued by the department of uh, administrative reforms so we need to drop the schedule keep the files there and accordingly Uh, translate it, you know, uh, uh, to action. 
so okay. after five years you know the same uh, files can be traced and uh, then we can we can decide whether it should be continued etc etc so okay maybe you, after the review yeah after okay. a review so review will be taking place in between so okay. it is not that it should be kept for 10 years so yes. after 5 years you know and depending on the the nature of the the file uh, the the concerned officer uh, with the, uh, the with the with the approval of the division head can okay. uh, can weed out the files you know so uh, the, if you look into the central secretariat manual it is available online so if you okay. just type google it out you know central secretariat manual of office procedures uh, 2022 okay. 2022 so there you can go through all the details like the right from the application to all the procedures have been listed out so yeah. so accordingly we can work out but as far as rta is concerned uh, uh, now everything is uh, digitally available digitized now. yeah digital right. so this all this thing were drawn up in a in a era where there was not much uh, digitalization digitally. so maybe in the years to come there will be further simplification of rules and regulations you know once this physical records are transferred to digital format and uh, then it can be stored right. So okay. the, the Department of Administrative Reforms and the, the National Archives have to uh, drop the, the simplification process, no? basically. On the, uh, so they, 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 they are uh, doing that exercise. They are every year, no? they are simplifying the procedures to make the, the, uh, make the offices uh, easy to follow the rules. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you for that uh, clarification. Um, well, um, Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Rajesh, for giving me this uh, platform. And I think uh, as we all have already deliberated and uh, our esteemed uh, speakers have already mentioned that uh, we are in the special campaign two launched by the government of India and uh, with a thrust on mainly on two aspects. One is uh, institutionalizing cleanliness and the other is uh, reducing pendency in government offices and uh, on a mission mode basically and this has uh, i mean uh, i think it has been triggered by the success of the uh, special campaign one uh, which also took this uh, you know with this kind of uh, missionary zeal and added to it some more innovative uh, practices and initiatives uh, to be taken which have been spelled out the guidelines have been provided uh, by way of uh, specific parameters uh, um, 11 parameters uh, on which uh, activities have to be organized and taken forward. And as uh, our uh, experts have said, and uh, I also personally feel that it doesn't have to be just uh, this one month, as it were, you know, we need to sort of imbibe the spirit and take it on uh, uh, as a as a matter of habit or, you know, as, as our lifestyle. So change of our lifestyle, basically beginning with a change of our mindsets to, um, you know, imbibe what has been uh, conveyed through this uh, special campaign two, or for that matter, uh, uh, the special campaign one. And um, it was very, uh, very, very uh, comprehensively explained by Shri Kareem how, um, you know, uh, we are going to uh, institutionalized cleanliness. He gave us example of uh, Mahatma Gandhi's uh, philosophy of uh, cleanliness, maintaining hygiene, both in personal life and in societal life, and how, uh, you know, a, cle a clean mind, a clean body will house a clean mind. So I think it all begins with that. And uh, by and large, to practice cleanliness uh, in the office premises, of course, as stipulated by the government of India, uh, the guidelines are being followed. And as Dr. Mahapatra very clearly informed that all our regional centers, we have 57 regional centers, and they are conducting the drive, the cleanliness drive, as well as, um, you know, the drive for minimizing pendency, uh, record management, etc. at all our regional centers and in the headquarter offices as well. And um, that is being done. This webinar today is uh, part of that drive, the awareness uh, generation and sensitization drive, which is being done by all the regional centers. So um, basically, I think the objective of this special can. No, I personally feel that uh, the, any well-managed 
information base is the foundation of responsible accountable government and a reliable records basically for functioning effectively so uh, it not only benefits the uh, present uh, generation as it were but also for posterity uh, it it leaves uh, something of value or worth so um, and also i feel that an efficient system will foster transparency accountability responsiveness in the functioning of the organization which ultimately is important and will factor in for a good governance good governance at every level whether it is at the uh, if we see the larger picture of the country or whether it is in our respective organizations so um, uh, you know these are the basic thrust areas this time that is you know cleanliness to be institutionalized uh, whether it is by a way of uh, you know record management creation of space managing space digitizing physical records or weeding out you know old obsolete records disposal of scraps and uh, also very importantly to uh, review and simplify existing rules procedures to uh, institutionalize the cleanliness in government departments and to sensitize government officials about it so um, uh, you know i think it's especially coming to the three r's as it were the reduce reuse recycle uh, principle um i think it, it, it in uh, not just our office i think it it we look at it as a larger picture um it, from the individual to the global it's not just about it is of course about our immediate environment whether it's at home or in the office but we cannot absolve ourselves of the responsibility of you know impacting the uh, environment in a positive manner in a you know adopting such practices which are environment friendly because we are all witness to the uh, environmental catastrophes that we are all encountering in different parts of the world so this is an interrelated interdependent phenomena i feel we cannot be isolated in our view or in our outlook and feel that no this part of the world is doing this so we are exempt no i feel every individual to whatever extent in any part of the world is responsible for a sustainable life on planet earth now looking at the uh, you know this campaign i think the overarching goal of this campaign the special campaign too is also though we have uh, sort of you know channelized it into two broad areas one is cleanliness because without whether it is creating space whether it is efficient management of records whether it is removal of obsolete items whether it is weeding out records it eventually will lead to a clean working environment to an efficient working environment to an uh, attractive space because the, when we in the past of course now things have changed as you said sir with digitalization etc a lot of work is going on in the last few years a lot of impetus on cleaning the uh, office the um, area and office space but if you visualize a picture of a government office some years ago or even now maybe some offices i don't know the it, it you know a, a place stacked up with files and this it, it's quite a deterrence itself to enter a government office for any activity so to give this citizens of this country a pleasing experience and a rewarding experience as it were that you know a fulfilling experience of visiting any government office i think it is primary that we Uh, you know adopt uh, this uh, these practices which are environment friendly which are office friendly which are society friendly to give us a healthy and robust uh, society in which all can thrive i mean uh, so uh, i think uh, ignu also in its own way we have uh, taken this forward in real um, you know in real right earnest um as dr mahapatra was very rightly saying that a lot needs to be done as far as record management is concerned because uh, ignu is the open university sir as you are aware and uh, the odl system is more of an industrialized process as it were because we have you know the student support mechanisms involve a lot of operations and processes so which involves a lot of record as on today as on date we have around 3 uh, you know 3 th- million learners on the rolls so um, which which is a huge number 30 lakhs more than 30 lakhs i think so uh, those are on the rolls and then we have alumni so you know uh, that involves a lot of records not just of the students but of the entire office we are distributed across the country in all the states 56 regional centers so uh, a lot needs to be done and a lot is being done in the wake of these guidelines the directives of the government of india 
under uh, various campaigns our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi ji has given us this um, mission the motto to have a clean india to have a healthy india to have a jisko kehte hain swasth bharat aur ek uttarottar pragatishil bharat so uh, i think without uh, these uh, important um, aspects in mind um uh, uh, you know we need to keep this in mind and move ahead in the spirit in which uh, the 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 campaign has been launched by the government i just wish to inform you that rsd has taken it up through its regional centers um, under the guidance of our honorable vice chancellor and pro vice chancellor we are engaging the regional centers are undertaking various activities and as has been provisioned in this campaign there is a portal on which you know the pre as you showed us sir just now in various organizations that you have dealt with the pre uh, state and the post state after the campaign so all that is going to be documented and it will be uploaded on the portal and then the best practices uh, ignu also is planning to share all the best practices uh, through workshops etc so um, all this has been done and um, i think uh, we are still in the process a few more days are left but as all our eminent speakers have said i think we need to continue with this take this forward and uh, actually make it our uh, lifestyle and practice in the days to come in the near future so that is all that i have to say and uh, thank you immensely uh, sir uh, shri karim ji and uh, dr rajesh for giving us this platform to express our views thank you and over thank you ma'am and uh, it was a wonderful presentation in which you had uh, brought the local to the global uh, in one platform um, all the initiatives that we need to take and uh, on a global scale how a uh, conscious citizen should act as far as the three r's uh, is concerned was well encapsulated in your presentation madam as always it was a pleasure to listen to you uh, thank you for that presentation ma'am uh, in fact may i come in for a minute huh? Uh, please, ma'am. Uh, please, sir. Yeah, two quick points. Basically, uh, Madam mentioned about the, this special campaign, and uh, it is actually going to to help you know to to improve the environmental situation. You know, basically the 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 paper which we cut you know for the for a, for, a, for making the paper and all these things you know can be reduced through digitalization. So the Uh, if you go digitalize the records, you know, I told you that uh, at the start of the meeting that you know three rooms are full of uh, this type of vouchers. You no, know? they have kept for almost ten years, uh, and everybody thought that you know if the audit team comes, then it should be made available to them. Otherwise, you know, they will be put under difficulty. So that's the reason why three big rooms, you know, were kept locked. for this thing and now they are going to digitalize all these records you know and then they are uh, trying to change the situation so it is a welcome change you know so it will help in the other way the environment gets benefited secondly the office atmosphere gets improved so only one some uh, one mr shihab has said you know whether uh, whether yes sir, i will i will uh, place his comment on the uh, panel so that everyone can see so yeah. uh, i will uh, just put it across yeah this is a question from mr shihab and uh, uh, it states uh, whether there is any uh, measure taken by the government of india not to make mandatory the physical documents of records for auditing purposes your comments so I, i think the, they are going to simplify the process of course there should be some records you know once the payment is made you know either you have a digital copy or whatever no so that has to be made available uh, so uh i think the latest guidelines one has to look into because from the audit point of view uh, one need to keep the document so i think in the uh, during the last few years i think the this thing has been simplified that's why that three big rooms you know which i said they are uh, digitalizing the records and uh, removing the papers you know so it will be digitally made available but i would uh, like you to refer to the the latest guideline from the government of india on this thing you know in order to make sure that you are uh, correct from the audit point of view uh, that is uh, uh, the question that we have uh, on this uh, particular presentation but there are lots of comments in fact uh, several comments are there uh, as you can see on the right hand side of this uh, page and uh, the uh, in fact uh, it is very difficult for us to go through all the comments 
uh, however uh, the general uh, perception that i uh, get from uh, the comments which have been placed over here is that this uh, session has been very useful for the listeners and um, in fact uh, i uh, in fact personally i would like to thank uh, our colleagues from other regional centers as well as our coordinators and study center staff who have joined in large numbers for this presentation today uh, uh, because their support means a lot to us um, and we have been live for uh, one hour 20 minutes that itself shows the kind of enthusiasm that uh, uh, our uh, our listeners uh, share with us on this particular uh, issue so uh, since it has been a long session i think uh, it is appropriate now uh, to have a formal vote of thanks from our uh, assistant registrar, Dr. Praveen Kumara. Thank you, sir. A very good evening to one and all present here. I deem it a great honor and privilege to propose the vote of thanks on this occasion. We have witnessed today a webinar which is of much importance, not only to an organization, but the same can effectively be implemented in our homes as well as the society we live in. The Swachata Campaign 2.0 focuses on cleanliness drive in offices and other administrative buildings, weeding out of old and obsolete records, among other things. The special campaign has yielded uh, 272 crores and has cleared up to 37.19 lakh square feet of space. And uh, it is uh, still, uh, uh, we expect it to grow further first and foremost i thank our chief guest respected shri pk abdul karim sir economic advisor department of land resources ministry of rural development for enlightening us with his wide knowledge on the subject and for sharing uh, his uh, valuable experience this will definitely help us in taking forward the idea and implementing the same in our organization thank you sir I sincerely thank respected Honorable Dr. Srikant Mahapatra sir, Pro Vice Chancellor IGNO for delivering the presidential address. Thank you sir for your inspiring words and encouragement and for stressing the importance of record handling, record maintenance and digitization of records. My heartfelt thanks to Dr. Hema Pant ma'am, additional, regional, additional Director, Regional Services Division for the special address on record management and the implementation of three hours in offices and on the initiatives which we need to take. Thank you, ma'am. I thank Dr. M. Rajesh, Senior Regional Director, IGNO Regional Center Vadagra, for giving me this opportunity and for his valuable guidance. Thank you, sir. I also thank Dr. Pramila O, Assistant Regional Director, for our support in the successful conduct of the progr program. Thank you, ma'am. I thank all the officials from IGNO headquarters, all the regional directors, colleagues at the regional centers, all the coordinators, study center functionaries, academic counselors, and dear learners for attending this program. I'm sure the valuable address by our respected speakers have thrown light on the importance of record management and implementation of three hours. Thank you, one and all. Uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Praveen, uh, for, for that uh, very nice uh, word of thanks. Um, uh, before closing, uh, I would also like to place on record the immense support that we received from our director, RSD, um, uh, Dr. UC Pandesa, who, who is an inspiration for all of us. And not only that, he also uh, um, uh, takes special care and interest in all activities related to RC Vatagara. So, uh, though he is, uh, uh, he is uh, suffering from a, a bad bout of uh, fever and cold today, uh, his uh, support is always felt in all the activities that we take up. So I thank all the uh, esteemed personalities who have jo joined us today on this uh, evening broadcast. It was wonderful discussing this very important topic, topic with you, all of you. And uh, I hope that in the near future, we can all assemble like this once again on another topic. And uh, I'm sure Karim sir, would be happy to uh, extend his support for such programs in future as well. Thank you, Varnayana. Thank you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.